So Canvas Studio has some Edpuzzle-like functionality where you can actually create your own quizzes uh, to go along with videos or um, just annotate onto videos with some notes or links on top of them. So I'm going to start off by getting into Canvas. So once I've logged into Canvas, uh, on my sidebar here, down towards the bottom, I have an option for Canvas Studio. Now Canvas Studio does not live in any individual course. It's a separate tool that we actually pay for as a district um, to be able to create either those types of activities or just basic screen recording if you want to. And so if you were gonna do screen recording, this is where you would do just recording a screen. But if you wanted to do something where you're gonna annotate or add a quiz to a video, um, then I'm gonna go here to add. Now, when I choose to add to Canvas Studio, I can either choose something I already have on my device. So if I've made my own movie or my own screen recording and I wanted to add something to it, I could do that. Or you can simply take any video that's on YouTube or Vimeo and paste those links in here. I will tell you YouTube videos work a little better in our district because some Vimeo things are blocked. So I have a YouTube video here and I'm gonna paste my YouTube link in here and tell it to add that video. Now what that does is that adds that video right here uh, into Canvas Studio. And I can now hit these three dots next to that. And I have the option to either annotate on that video or to create a quiz. So an annotation, what that allows you to do, um, it opens up your video and I could hit play. So in Pattonville, we use a managed Apple ID and pause. I can click down here to jump at any individual spot where I want, and then I could simply hit this plus sign, and this gives me the ability to add what's called a headline, uh, a description, um, and then I can even add links to it if I wanted to. So this is kind of like a note card that gets added on top of um, your individual video where things will pop up at a certain time. I could add these notes and then hit save, and then it will pop this message up once it gets to this specific spot in this video. So again, the video is still playing behind it, but once it gets to the spot, it pauses, and then whatever my note card or annotation that I created uh, shows up here on top of it. And again, I could add links to that as well that they could click on, which would take them somewhere else. So that's simply a nice way to add extra content to a video. But if you wanted to get that true Edpuzzle-like functionality, then you're gonna create what's called a quiz. So if I create a quiz, it's gonna open up and ask me to give this quiz uh, some settings. So first of all, I need to give it a title. I could give it a description if I want to. Um, it's got a couple settings here. I could choose whether or not those question markers show up for students. So I could hide those so the students wouldn't know when that question is coming. Um, that helps a little bit as far as skipping and things go. Again, it doesn't have the, quite the same functionality as Edpuzzle does, um, but you could hide those and they would have to watch to find out when those questions are gonna pop up. And then um, you can also choose whether or not if you had annotations, you want those to show up as well. But I'm gonna tell it to get started and it's gonna work the same way. I could play my video, I could click and jump at any specific spot or I might wanna ask a question and then id.psdr3.org. And then once I get to that point, I'm gonna hit the plus sign, and I can add either a multiple choice, true or false, or multiple answer. And so maybe I'll start with the true or false question here. And then once I have my question uh, in here, I could mark it either true or false. Now I can go down here to question feedback, um, and then I could choose, first of all, what is the right answer? Uh, this is a false answer. And then for correct answer, I could choose to give them a specific comment. Good job, way to go. For an incorrect answer, I could give them, um, again, some, some follow-up questions or some follow-up thing for more information, blah, blah, blah. Or I can just provide generic feedback that'll happen no matter what they choose. And then hit save. And again, this question is gonna be added at the 27 uh, second point of this video. And then again, I could move to the next spot where I want there to be a question and I hit the plus sign and this time maybe I'll do a multiple choice. Um, again, I ask my question, I type in the multiple choice answers. I have the option to shuffle the choices or varying points by answer and again, options for feedback if I want to as well. 
And then finally, the third option is multiple answer. Uh, and this is where you would simply choose all that apply. So once I'm finished going through and adding all my questions to my video, I'm gonna go ahead and click done. So now once I have this video done, I'm gonna go add it to a specific class. So I'm gonna start off by just going into whichever course I'd like to add that video. And I have a couple different options here. Um, I could just share this video anywhere I'd like. If I had uh, a page of content here, I could simply add this video to a page uh, by going to the edit button. And where it gives me the ability to add the page or edit my page, um, I have a toolbar here with different options. And in that toolbar, there is a plug uh, and Canvas Studio shows up in this list. If it's not in there, you may have to view all and then choose Canvas Studio. Uh, but once you've chosen it once, it should show up in here. And this allows you just to put that video uh, somewhere into your uh, page of content. Now, if you choose to do it that way, it won't use it as an assignment. It won't keep track of students' individual scores. It would be more of just a practice activity where students would be able to take it uh, at their leisure and uh, to maybe study for a quiz or something along those lines. If you wanted it to be something where it keeps track of individual students progress and individual student scores, then you're going to create an assignment. So if I go into my assignments now and I create a new assignment and I give my assignment a name, um, I could type in some directions here if I want, uh, but now I'm going to go down instead of using this toolbar here, I'm going to go down here to the bottom. I'm going to choose to give it a point total. Uh, choose an assignment group, and where it says submission type, I want to use an external tool. In that external tool list, I now search, and I should see Canvas Studio. I choose Canvas Studio, and it's going to ask me uh, to choose from my studio. So it shows me all the videos I have in studio. You'll notice if it has a little rocket in the corner, that means there's a quiz attached. And I'm going to select the video I just created. Now, before I hit embed, um, there's two options. I have a standard embed. What that means is this is just the video without the quiz. So if I just wanted to put videos into Canvas Studio uh, and put them into a course as part of an assignment, this is one way you could go about doing it. Not the only way, just one way. Or if I wanted it to have the quiz, I want what's called a video quiz embed. And then this simply asked me to choose which video quiz that was attached to this video I want to choose from. Uh, most of the time you're only going to have one quiz per video, but if you wanted to or maybe had different ability level quizzes for each video, you could simply pick and choose which one you wanted. And then tell it to embed. Now, again, once I've done that, I now hit select to apply. It has my link in here. And now I'm going to give my assignment a due date and save and publish. Now it may take a few minutes for it to prepare your quiz before it's available for students to be able to use. Depends how many questions you have, how long your video is, things like that. Now from the student side, it'll simply play the video. And then once it gets to the first question, um, notice I've hidden the marker so they won't know when the first question is coming. Um, but I know because I made it that it's at the 27 second mark. So if I jump ahead and hit play, and that should show you an Apple ID that ends in at appleid.psdr3.org. Then they get to the spot and then it automatically pops up and asks a question. And then I could go back to rewatch and it would go back to that point before then and rewatch that section. Um, and I could simply answer my question and hit continue. If I'd given feedback, that feedback would pop up and then it'll go ahead and continue the video until that next section. Now, once they've finished watching the video, they then get a message that says the video has been completed. Um, their quiz has been completed. They could either redo it or they could submit that quiz. They have to hit submit quiz to get a grade on it. And then once they tell it to submit that quiz, then they now have results. So it's been submitted. They could view the results and see how they did. It'll also tell them the total amount of time for this attempt. So if this was a 10 minute video and they only spent four minutes and 40 seconds, you will be able to see that. So from the teacher side, I can click on insights and I could see um, just some data on the video, how many viewers have viewed it, how many times it's been played, etc. cetera. Um, I could see how many people completed it uh, and so on. Or I can go to quiz results and this will allow me to go to my student results and I can see every student 
uh, who took this test and what score they got on that and again the time that they took uh, and when they took it so um, even though they can skip ahead I will be able to see the time and see whether they did it um, just like you potentially could on an HR video of some sort uh, but again that's the way it works in your quiz results